I'll call the meeting to order. Before we jump in, let me read the emergency evacuation procedures. In the event of an emergency evacuation, an alarm may sound. Everyone should exit the building by way of the nearest stairwell in a safe and effective manner. If the nearest stairwell is blocked by smoke, use the other stairwell. Do not use the elevator. Once you've reached the main floor, follow the exit signs to exit the building and quickly proceed away from the building. Please be mindful of others evacuating and of emergency vehicles. With that said, you have the, the minutes were in your packet. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes of last month's meeting? We have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, minutes are approved. Uh, we don't have any public hearings tonight. Uh, is there anyone in the audience that wishes to uh, speak or provide public input on items on the agenda? If there are none, we will proceed to site plans. John 3132, Highway 411 South. I want to introduce Thomas Lloyd. Uh, he's the, now the building commissioner. Uh, so I'm not going to speak with any authority tonight other than a continuity of analysis from the Board of Zoning Appeals to the Planning Commission. Since I wrote the memo, I've worked it out with Thomas that I will uh, present tonight. If you have to get official word from anything, then I'm going to turn to Thomas and I'm just going to have a confirmation from him. <laughs> okay. And Thomas will eventually be the, basically the uh, uh, development uh, see, uh, uh, planning director when I leave in, at the end of the year. Uh, you have a memo and a site, set of site plans, uh, sheets uh, for this property. It's the Overlook Village. It's an apartment complex. I'm not going to go in detail of the memo itself, the body of the memo. What I want to do is to skip to page five for the conditions. <clears throat> And I'll just read this into the record uh, so everybody will have it. Given the split jurisdiction for site plan approval, staff recommends that the Planning Commission approve the site plan with conditions so that final disposal can fall to the BZA without need to reconsider the site plan again by the Planning Commission. Staff recommends the following conditions for approval. Amendment of the site plan to show required 40-foot setbacks from side and rear lines. Addition of additional buffering treatment with the common line of Huffstetler and McDaniel. Incorporation of additional usable recreation area to meet minimum requirements for high density multifamily developments. Addition of parking spaces to meet requirements. Finalizing a formal agreement and submission of documents confirming such agreement for extension of sewer to the property. That's with the city of Maryville. Confirmation that the total height of buildings, including roof lines, does not exceed 35 feet to meet requirements for scenic highways. <coughs> Addition of note to the site plan that all common recreation areas shall be maintained by owner manager of the apartment complex. Resolution by the Board of Zoning Appeals of any issues with sinkholes on the property in relation to the detention area and the access road. Conduct of a traffic study and prepare detailed of driveway entrance design acceptable to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Approval by the Board of Zoning Appeals of variance to allow one driveway entrance instead of two required by regulations. And finally, approval by the Board of Zoning Appeals of, of the special exception for high density multifamily development. Uh, with that, I, the Board of Zoning Appeals has uh, processed this and considered it in quite a bit of detail. I provided you the, the analysis that was uh, sent to them. I think it would be uh, in the best interest of process if you feel it's appropriate to approve this site plan uh, subject to those conditions. I think it is a good site plan. It just needs to kind of uh, uh, file down some rough edges and make some additions to meet requirements, but everything that uh, are shown as conditions there are doable. Any questions or comments? Bruce? Uh, yeah. uh, got several concerns, especially on page four of B and C. And also, I, I just went, drove in there this afternoon, and <clears throat> this being 120 dwelling units, there's going to be a lot of children in there, I would assume. And a bus would have to turn in 
slowly off out of the middle lane if he was heading south. And if a car was coming down the slope, he's got to make a get in there pretty quick and turn up the hill. And if he's coming from the south headed north, he's going to have to make that turn slowly to uh, so there are no decel lanes to just turn a, bu a school bus in there. The school bus is real concern to me. And I don't think they're going to be stopping on the side of the road picking up the kids. But that, that is a they major concern for me, the school bus issue. And the design of the entrance uh, with no decel acceleration lanes. Okay, the Board of Zoning Appeals, one reason that they uh, deferred action on this was because they uh, required and needed further information on a traffic study. Tennessee Department of Transportation also is going to require a traffic study uh, for those very reasons, uh, and they were requiring a, uh, a, an illustration of turning movements for large vehicles, which would include not only buses, but also moving vans. So they are going to require a moving uh, you know, illustration for, for turning into the property and, and I presume around that curve uh, for larger vehicles. Commissioner French. I, there, there is somebody that might can, Derek, do you want to try to address that? <coughs> Just identify yourself for the record. <coughs> My name is Derek Jones with Sterling Engineering. Um, the traffic study, I've been working with Cameron Parker at TDOT even before the BZA meeting, kind of working through the entrance details and, and basically we left it pretty basic. Uh, we checked the turning movements on the larger vehicles and, and they are they are tied. I mean, there will have to be some, some work done to that entrance. The main thing TDOT wanted uh, as well as BZA was the traffic study to determine what what that thing, the final product needed to look like to make all of this work. And it won't be the final product that's on those plans. Uh, that's where the traffic engineer will tell us what it needs to be to accommodate that. The traffic study is in process. They finished the counts. Cannon and Cannon's preparing that, by the way. Um, the counts are finished and we're hoping to have the report back uh, Wednesday, so day after tomorrow, which will shed some light on the whole entrance. And, and whatever the report says, basically, is, as TDOT's uh, said whatever the report says is what you draw. So <clears throat> once we get that, that's what we'll put in it, and that that issue will be put to bed. Bruce, do you have any further comment after that? Not right now. Okay. Commissioner French. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, since I've been on the Planning Commission, I don't I don't believe we've seen anything like this. And, uh, it, it's kind of boggling to me. Uh, a, a, a split zoning. Uh, I know it explains in here front part being commercial, rear being suburbanizing. Uh, how deep does the commercial zone go? I, I couldn't find a, a line on, on the any, anywhere here that says does it go back 500 feet, 400 feet? I, I'm just, you know. I can tell you what it is approximately. It's approximately uh, the uh, first and second set of apartments. The first and part and of the second parking what? there. Huh? The first and second what? It says, if you turn to the second page, site plan, okay. you'll see uh, uh, the apartments one, apartments two there at the very beginning of the, the site. Mm -hmm. It's approximately those and part of the parking. That's where the... Uh, uh, the uh, commercial goes to. So you're saying that one and two are going to be in the commercial zone? Yes. The, co the commercial zone okay. is not a real critical issue here because these uses are allowed both in commercial right. and suburbanizing. Uh, and I'm just giving you an approximation. It might actually clip the third apartment uh, uh, portion there, uh, number three. Uh, so it might clip that a little bit. 
The reason it's split is because when it came in for rezoning, they wanted the whole property commercial, but there's a residential subdivision to the rear, and uh, the county commission and the planning commission felt at the time that it would be best not to push that commercial all the way back to the uh, uh, to that uh, subdivision in the back. So, so how many feet are we talking there? Pardon? How many feet are we talking? About half of the 720, about 350, okay. something like that, maybe. Commissioner Carter. Uh, the Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I'm curious. Can we not make an entrance that's big enough for a bus to pull into, load the kids, and be able to pull out safely? Well, I'm not sure exactly how a bus is going to service, a school bus is going to service this property. Uh, so I can't tell you exactly. The assumption made by Bruce was that it will pull in, go up to the top, and then pick up the kids and come all the way back down and exit, which means all you've got to worry about is a turn into the property. There, there will most likely be a deceleration lane for that property, and a bus could, uh, you know, park there temporarily and then turn back into traffic on the uh, on uh, for this. This is the entrance, right? That's the entrance, yes. I mean, I'm not sure whether the kids have to go all the way down to the bottom of the hill and the entrance to, to get on a school bus or whether the school bus will actually go into the property. Do you have any idea on that? I, I don't really know how, how to structure that. I, I know that both, both the entrance is drawn now and, and the, um, the movements that are within the development themselves. We have a turning radius uh, uh, template that we use in AutoCAD. So we utilize school bus um, and the large moving vans to try and make sure that those turning movements could work there. And that's part of the reason that you'll see the entrance, even the way we've got it drawn, even, even though it will change, um, that entrance isn't the standard 24 foot width. It's, uh, I want to say it's 30, going from memory, 30 or 32 I think maximum's 40. So, <clears throat> so we've widened it out to try and get the maximum width to give us room to for that turning movement. And I suspect that a decel lane will be required by, by the traffic study. I mean, if, no, if for no other reason, purely based on the speed limit. Well, if you know the line of traffic for, for the bus, I mean, they have a direction they're going to. I was a mailman before, so I know you got a way you got to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if you can make that correct to where they can just pull in and pull out, do we know that? That would be important to find out. Because if they've got to turn around there and come back, that's different than just pulling in and pulling back out going this, the same direction. Well, if they have to go, if they're going north on this and they have to go back south after they pick up kids, uh, I don't think that will work. I mean, I, 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 I wouldn't think that that would be the route that you would take. You'd have to pull into the property, come in, turn back around, and line up with the... I concur, but if you don't know what the route is, you don't know what they're doing. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> So, I'm good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner French. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on the items uh, that need that uh, the conditions for approval, mm -hmm. I noticed in uh, one of the paragraphs it stated that the, if there was a sign that was going to be put up there at the entrance, uh, uh, I don't see any reference to it uh, uh, under the conditions for approval if the sign is going to be uh, uh, constructed there, erected there, that it meet the requirements of the of our uh, zoning regula regulations. Should that be included in the conditions? You you can, but it, but a separate sign uh, permit is allowed. So yes, it, I it's saw not that. required. It's not required to be on there. So I didn't feel that that was a, a necessary condition. Okay. I mean, it, it wouldn't hurt if you wanted to add that. It's wow. just basically what you're stating is that the sign permit will have to come later and meet all the requirements. Uh, and and I'm also curious. Uh, we've never run across something like had all these different conditions. We've got 11, 12 conditions. I, I'm curious, is this the first time that they've seen these conditions? I mean, is 
Well, they First time who? The people that own the property. Have they? No, they, they've been through the Board of Zoning Appeals already, so, so they know the body of the text and, and they well, know the Well, I'm concerns. curious how, how they feel about the conditions I here. Are, ask they, them directly. are they willing to, I mean, meet all these conditions? Because there are quite a bit there. Uh, you've got core samples that probably need to be taken. and uh, I'm just curious if they're willing to go through this. To I guess they won't mind if I speak for them. <laughs> Um, basically, we've had a geotechnical report done even before we went to BZA. <clears throat> there were uh, 25, I think 25, borings done on the site. Uh, there, uh, there were some sinkhole pictures that I think Justin had, uh, had produced at some point. We've had geoservices who did the original geotechnical testing back out on site. They've been addressing those. They'll be on site during the construction. Uh, as well, so you know anything like that that happens, they'll be be involved with um, <clears throat> the parking, uh, the open space, uh, all of those things um, are, are minimal. They're they're not a problem. The biggest thing that we the biggest plan change that we'll have will be doing whatever we've got to do with that entrance okay. um, because that's got to work. As as it's been mentioned, that that is the main. As, as the engineer signing those drawings, that is my main concern uh, because there's a lot of safety issues can, uh, to deal with that. And, and paying the money for a traffic study, uh, whether it was required or not, I think was a, is a wise thing to do. I think BZA would have asked for it, and if not, Planning Commission probably would have asked for it. I think it's worthwhile, and it allows us to make sure we get that in, in, in the way that it needs to be in for the buses. And, and not just buses, but just pedestrian just everybody so but yes we have no problem with all the conditions okay that, that's that thank you mr chairman any other comments or discussion do i have a motion We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. Is Bruce the only no? Or do I need to go through the exercise? Record Bruce's no. <clears throat> Final plats, Grassy Knoll subdivision. Thank you. <clears throat> Grassy Knoll subdivision, lots three through five, off Lowe's Ferry Road by Chris Denny. There are three lots, one with road frontage and two served exclusively off a common driveway easement. Uh, the outstanding items to be completed are on the top of page three, and I'm going to read those into the record. Number one is the completion of repairs to the common driveway. Stabilization of all disturbed areas and completion of paving at entrance in accordance with the preliminary plat approval. Uh, I'd like to report that the driveway is about 90% done and we will do a final inspection. Uh, number two, supply copy of maintenance agreement to staff for review. Uh, since I've written that, we have that document, but we'll need an original. And number three, $40 per lot platting fee. Questions or comments? Do you, you have any idea when they plan on completing the driveway? No, I don't. It's just about done. There was last time I was out there I was still putting some matting down and some seed. They had already paved the entrance. Any additional questions? I have a second. second. Motion and a second. If there's no further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Montgomery Meadows. Uh, number two is on page three. The Hall property off Carnes Road. 
by Stephen and Jill Hall. Two lots served off a common driveway easement and a remainder greater than five acres. The outstanding items to be completed are on the bottom, begin on the bottom of page four. At number one is the completion of improvements for the common driveway. Number two is a supply copy of the maintenance agreement to staff for review. I'm still waiting on that. Uh, number three is signature plats and a $40 per lot platting fee. And the common driveway is, um, is complete. Comments or questions? Commissioner McFarland. I just want to make a note for the surveyor to add a distance on that little piece of a line between L4 and L5 there. He doesn't show that distance tied to that pin there. At the end of Carnes Road. Was, yeah, we got it. You got it now? No, I mean, we'll get it from him. Okay. Mr. French. Uh, it, it, it states in the construction of improvements that the driveway contractor has indicated that the gray, grading and gravel surface is to be completed prior to the time of this meeting? It is completed. It is. I, I, that was my question then. Outstanding items be completed, completion of improvements for the common driveway. So it's already been completed. It's been completed since the time I wrote that, yes. Oh, okay. I'm just, I was just curious why it's listed if it's already been completed. It's already been completed. Oops. All right. Do we have a motion? Okay. All right. We have a motion and a second with the addition of the uh, drawing note. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Ready? I got ahead of you before. <laughs> okay, preliminary and final plat, major subdivision, Montgomery Meadows. Lots one through 10 by Travis and Robin Loop off Old Niles Ferry Road. 10 lots along the county road. Now the reason this is a preliminary and final plat at the same time with that number of lots is simply there's no infrastructure that needs to go in. Um, outstanding items to be completed. Number one, submission of drainage planning calculations. Um, we have received that. There are no drainage requirements other than the letter that we received in the calculations from the engineer. I did have a comment from the engineer about lot 10 and the driveway coming out of there. I think you and I can have a conversation about that in the field. Take care of it. Uh, number two, all certifications on the final plats. And number three, a $40 per lot platting fee. Any questions or comments? Commissioner McClellan. Motion to approve. Yes. We have a motion and a second to approve subject to outstanding items to be completed. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Thank Doug. you. Resubdivision. Uh, yeah, resubdivision of lot 4R2 of the Stanley Ispel property by David Brown off Teeth Teller Lane. There are three lots served off an existing easement. Uh, the outstanding items to be completed. are on page nine, the top of page nine. Uh, number one, completion of driveway improvements, including cleaning out the pipe um, under the existing driveway and regrading rough portion of drive and replacing stone as listed in the, st in the staff analysis. Uh, number two, maintenance agreement prior to releasing the final plat. And number three, a $20 per lot platting fee. Any questions or comments? Commissioner not that, it's a, not a, is it, that it's a big deal, but is Stanley Isbell and Stanley Isbell the same person, I assume, aren't they? 
I think it's, yeah, they're the same Just person. Spelling. I think it's I S B I L L. We'll check it. Do I have a motion? Second. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second to approve resubdivision of lot one. Or excuse me, of the uh, I've got ahead of myself here, turning pages of the Isbell property. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion <clears throat> carries. You ready for the last item, Mr. Chairman? Resubdivision. Yes. <laughs> Um, re Resale division of lot one, Everett Cook property on Floyd Porter Road by Martha Cochran Estate. There are two lots with a variance request to lot size for lots 1R1 and 1R2. I put a note in here, there, um, this does not require an action by the BZA. It's exempt under the BZA statutes. Um, the outstanding items to be completed are on the bottom of page nine. Uh, one is a consideration of the variance requested uh, by the Planning Commission. Number two, Environmental Health Department certification of the final plat and any potential adjustment to lot sizes for duplication area to either lot. And number three, signature plats and a $20 per lot platting fee. Questions or comments? Commissioner Prince. Uh, if there is a uh, adjustment to the lot sizes, does it ha have to come back to us or if we I don't think so if it's okay. reasonable. That's the Planning Commission in every single case where there's been two structures and there's two existing septic systems already, they've allowed the division to occur because they're already there. But it is a variant situation. Do I have a motion? And a second. We have a motion and a second to uh, approve the resubdivision of Lot 1 Everett Cook property and lot, uh, off of Floyd Porter Road with variance uh, given the existing lot or building conditions. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. John, anything on long range? Well, I want to take this opportunity to uh, introduce, if you haven't met him already, Mr. Tip, Darrell Tipton. He's going to be the new member on the Planning Commission. He's actually not a new member. He's a returning member because he was, he was here quite a while back, and I'm glad to see him back on the Planning Commission. I've enjoyed working with him in the past, and unfortunately, I won't be able to work with him in the future. Uh, that's a segue into uh, Thomas's uh, position on this. I'm sure he's going to work himself a little bit more and more into the planning function, uh, and I'm, I'm hoping that that will include some long-range planning in the future. He's still getting his feet wet. He's also going to be the building commissioner, and I can tell you from experience of the last five months, being in planning and building commissioner is a tough road. To, uh, to travel, and I wish him the best in that, and I've got a full confidence that he's going to be able to handle it, and uh, you're in good hands with, uh, with Mr. Lloyd in the future. And it's been a joy working with you and all the planning commissioners and the county commissioners in the past, and I wish you and I wish this county the best in the future. Uh, John, we want to thank you for your years of service. Uh, I think you've led us well. And, uh, Thomas, you've got uh, big shoes to, to fill. Yes, uh, but His we, shoes are just about as big as mine. Maybe a little bigger. <laughs> we uh, welcome you to the... Uh, we welcome you. you to the county and uh, wish you the best. We can be a motley crew to uh, put up with at times. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Commissioner McCollum. I especially want to thank John, too, because he's been good to work with and been a surveyor who has to deal with planning commissions in several counties. 
John has made it easy, or not necessarily always easy, but easier for surveyors to uh, work with and planning commissions, and I wish some other candidates would do the same. Thank you for that. Anybody else up? I'd just like to express my thankfulness for John and all he's done for the county, and I've worked with him in the past, and I just wish him the best in the future. Thank you. One last item of business, if uh, Mr. Carter and Mr. Uh, 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 Clifford Walker would uh, stay after the meeting and let me figure out how we're going to do the training, because we might not be able to do it tonight. Uh, I'd be appreciative of that. Okay. Now, I, I would just, I've got one request. I would just ask that John Lamb not be a stranger for moving forward. You might find Citizen Lamb coming to your meetings. <laughs> <laughs> I'll <take it> back. <laughs> All right, thank you. We are adjourned and have a very merry and blessed Christmas, and I'll see you next year. That's right.